Now, to draw this, you guys, some of you guys, uh, they, uh, you guys put in some hard work. And uh, whatever the score you would see over there is going to get added up as extra credit in your total. So you have taken the pain, therefore, there will be some gain for you. Okay? So those who did not, those who did, okay? All right, so I'll start from, you know, bottom up. So this is the first result. Uh, wasn't quite sure what uh, he did, so he did not get much marks, but that's okay. Second, uh, it's too large and vanishing points and station point and horizon line, they weren't clear. Third, uh, Virendra, is he there? Virendra? Okay, so uh, maybe you, take, you took me too literally. So I said, well, I mean, just stand by your door and see how your room looks like. So you s stood a little far from the door, but that's okay. Uh, you know, as an art, as an art, it's wonderful. It's great. I mean, uh, so possibly Virendra is uh, possibly Virendra is standing over here, and um, he's honest. He shows what he sees. Yeah. Deepak, he took me too literally. So uh, he went far. Uh, Deepak Kumar. Is he there? Deepak Kumar. So not only was he standing a little away from his door, maybe uh, he went all the way up to the terrace of his hostel and he is looking at his room from there. So uh, that's okay. That's also art. Quite detailed. But I wonder what this is. Is this one of uh, the home assignments or classwork assignments? Uh, Jitesh Mohan Kumar, are you there? Huh? Well, was this uh, a homework assignment or a classwork assignment or? Okay, but your your drawing is quite detailed, wonderful. But that that was a one point perspective. Huh? Well, what you showed was a one point perspective. Good enough. So, uh, in some proportion, the marks that you have gotten will get added up to your total. So. You'll only gain. Ravi Kumar, is he there? Again, a single point perspective, but one foot. Hardik Soni, not there, gone home. Um, pretty nice. I mean, he started off with um, a side view, a profile view, a top view, and um, he pretty much drew this perspective, two point perspective, but um, he decided somehow work with lines, um, you know, a table would have a little, so it, it won't have any thickness, but line, but that's okay, so, huh? Which one? This one? No, but if you look at this table, so these are Possibly rods. That's okay. That's okay. So, Akash Deep. All right. So, you also did a pretty nice job. I mean, uh, started with the top view, profile view, detailed uh, drawing of your uh, room. Pretty nice. So, quite a few sets that we have. Samir Raja. Okay. Pretty nice. But again, I mean, uh, looks like you're working with the lines. Uh, you could have shown some thickness. That's okay. Shubham Agrawal. Nice effort. Naveen. Naveen. Pretty nice effort. Detailed. And you prefer to shade. So, nice. 
So, you know, just, just look at the drawing and uh, appreciate the amount of hard work some of you have put in this. And I really appreciate that. So, thanks very much. Aman Rusia? Aman Rusia? Okay. So, he starts with an 8. Pretty nice, detailed drawing. Ravi Raj? Okay, pretty nice. Um, height information. So that was something that I guess had you shown that clearly it could have been a little better. Yeah, pretty nice. Very artistic. Huh? What about the scale? No, that, that was a one point perspective. That's the reason why I would have gotten a. Yeah? So this is a two point. Was it? Which one? Yeah, but uh, it hardly shows anything. Yeah, well, the scale is too large, but then uh, where are the vanishing points and stuff like that? So, uh, and by the way, so I didn't grade them, so I asked one of my colleagues to help me out with that. So, all right, so uh, missing things, yeah, that information. So, uh, and then of course, the details, the top view and the profile view. Had you shown that, you know, things would have been a lot better. But still good enough. I mean, eight, pretty artistic. Sunil Chaudhary, all right, so pretty nice again. So start with details and uh, end up with uh, a pretty nice figure. Once again, I guess you uh, tend to choose lines. Yeah, so had you shown some thickness, things would have been a little better. Kumar Jain, Ish Kumar Jain, pretty nice. So so he's the first nine. So, no, 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 no. There's a, there's a little story behind this. This person used two sheets. So, this was the background sheet that he used, and his second sheet was this. Pretty nice. So, I'm very glad to see some artists coming out of this class. So, very nice. Arpit. Yeah, so looks pretty nice, but uh, somebody else wins. So uh, the picture is not very clear, uh, but if you look at the sheet, I'm not sure if uh, we have the sheet here. Uh, Mohit, um, call it luck or what? I mean, uh, Sonu has a pentagonal room. So she starts with a pentagonal top view, um, pretty much all the detailed information, the profile view here. And uh, one thing that possibly went to her favor was uh, that she was able to show that you know, there is another vanishing point, the third vanishing point. So technically, it was pretty good and it's pretty neat. You know, for quite some time I was pondering, what should I give? And uh, the best thing that I could give you is <laughs> which I'm giving, ain't I? I am giving. Yeah. So more marks. All right. Huh? A. Star, 
ok. Well let me wait till uh, your NCM exams are over. I will be and trust me I will be eager, I will be eager to give as many A's as possible, but I need your support for that. So if you do well in your NCM exams, I will be very happy to give you A's and many A stars, but if you do not do well in your exam, I won't have that support that I am looking for. So if you promise me that support, I promise you the grade. You give me support, I give you grade. Yeah? Okay, so auxiliary views. So quite a few would have gone home I believe, but that's okay. Um, we discussed a simple example last time, so many of you were not here, but uh, for your benefit, I'll probably go through this uh, again. So look at where we are now in the week. We are in the 11th week. We have after this four more lectures to go, two on interpretation of solids and two on development. Okay. Um, so you'll have to bear me for four more hours and the NCM exam. Um, so this is the example problem that you will be solving in lab number 11, I believe. Lab number, lab number 11? OK, yeah, yeah. So you already have the solution. If you don't, I'll go through it. So we need to figure out the uh, view of this object and the top view of this object. And uh, the trick is that two of the planes that you see, they are inclined. Okay, they don't get aligned with either the horizontal or the vertical. So it becomes a little difficult for you to draw the conventional orthographic view of this drawing. So what do you do? You take the help of auxiliary plane. Okay, you get the true shape of uh, the object on these planes and transfer that shape correspondingly in your uh, front view and the top view. Okay. <clears throat> So the center part of the object, it's not very difficult to draw, so maybe I'll just run through that. So it's a block, okay, some dimensions, uh, some protrusions coming out from the right, from the left. And of course, this angle is given, I think it's 45 degrees, so this angle is given. So perhaps I can get the thickness of the planes on both ends, okay, so this is the base, this is the primer, and then I project some features in the top view that I can. So in, from the top it's uh, going to be a hollow box in a way with some thickness. All right, so hidden lines, center line and if you want to and you have to do that. So to be able to capture the true features on this plane and on this plane you have to draw, you know, those features in the corresponding auxiliary views. Okay? So if you flip this plane by 90 degrees, you'll get the true features here. And likewise, if you flip this plane by 90 degrees, you'll get the true features over here. So here it's pretty much like a slot. And well, it's, it's yeah, so it's a semicircular slot. And here you have a T slot. So let's try to get that. Yeah? Yeah? Where? Here? Here? Why is there a center line? Hmm, should be there, should not be there. Huh? Should not be there? Why should it not be there? Okay. Okay. It should not be there. Do you have an eraser? <laughs> yeah, well, just erase it. So ignore that. Okay? Ignore that. Um, all right, so coming back to the true features on that plane, so this length is going to be 30. From here to here is 30. Uh, this would be about 
you know 40 um, so this total length is 40 so you have to draw a few arcs on both ends here and here okay so get this slot not very difficult get the arc get the arc and you have the true features on this plane on the auxiliary plane uh, the second one is it okay for me to have the center line here huh all right and of course so once we have this thingy here in the auxiliary view I'll have to come back and update my top view, uh, update my front view. So I'll have a dashed line corresponding to this feature, and on the right-hand side, again something very similar. <coughs> Drawing that is not going to be very difficult. Okay, so it's a T slot that we have, and once I have this auxiliary view, then I come back to my top view and I update that so I have corresponding hidden lines all right so is it okay for me to have a center line here also huh yes or no why not why symmetry so this center line is representing symmetry all right so is my front view done Am I, am I done with the front view? Am I done with the front view? Or do I need to do something else? Yes? No? Huh? No answer? Am I done with the front view? Good. <laughs> Not yet. How about this line? How about this line? What would this line correspond to? Huh? No? Which one? Which one? This one or this one? This one. Should it be hidden? Should it be solid? I'm okay. I'm okay, right? Should be hidden line. Okay, fine. So yeah, so because because you have flipped this thing like so, no? And likewise you'll have a line corresponding to this. Okay? So once your auxiliary views are finalized and through with start working with the top view and this is where I would need your attention so pay attention <clears throat> this is where things get complicated because uh, transferring these features from here to the top view is a little tricky okay so first get the projections match the projections yeah so Corresponding to this corner here, you'll be seeing a solid line. Corresponding to this one, you'll be seeing a dashed line. Center line. Should I have a center line here? Because the object is symmetric with respect to that. Okay. Pay attention. We'll transfer these features onto this feature. Okay. Now, you must have studied something way back, um, maybe five or six lectures ago, how to do that. Something very similar. So this is one of the views, a hinge line, second view, third view, right? So do you recall how do we transfer distances? Do you recall how do we transfer distances? Exactly the same thing, OK? All right, so I'm going to be projecting this feature up. And 
this is the tricky part. I have not yet identified the hinge line that would separate these two features. Okay, and how would I want to do that? I already have the hinge line here because if I if I don't do this correctly, then I'll mess up the transfer of features from this auxiliary view to here. Okay. Do you want to stay or? Okay. Yeah. So you have to be able to locate this hinge line properly because if you don't, then you will mess up your transfer of points from this auxiliary view up to this top view. Now what I do is I measure with respect to this hinge line. From this center line, I locate this point over here and I draw a little hinge line. Okay. Now this hinge line is local in the sense that this hinge line represents only the relation between these two views and the okay. Now once I have located the hinge line over there, rest becomes simple. I will measure this distance. I already have the projector up over there. I will transfer this distance over there. Okay. Likewise, I measure this distance, I transfer this distance over there. Okay. And what am I doing? Yeah, now I am measuring this distance. My projector is here. So I am projecting the top face now. Okay, so I am projecting this face now not this face. Okay. Measure distances, transfer distances. Okay. And then project this guy up over there, measure this distance, transfer that distance. Once I have all those distances over there, it is easier for me to make this T. Yeah. Why are we? You can. Yeah. So what you are saying is uh, these distances they remain the same. Is this what you are saying? That these distances are the same, it is this distance that gets uh, foreshortened. Huh? Yeah, you could do that if you want to do uh, if you want to draw this directly, you could do that. So I am just explaining the procedure uh, the, the procedure. For a little more complex looking objects, it may not be feasible for you to draw it the way you want to. Okay. All right. So, having worked on the top face of the object, now working on the bottom face of the object, exactly the same thing. Okay, a part of T will be visible, and a part of T will be invisible. So, this part inside, the previous T is going to be visible. Okay, this part is not going to be visible. So, it's going to be shown using hidden lines. Okay, so this part of T is right there. Where am I? Okay, okay, okay. Now, how about this arc, Kevin? That you cannot draw directly. So, you will have to take projections and you will have to measure distances precisely. So, look at this arc transfer this arc over then from the top view uh, from the front view to the top view. So, discretize that arc into a number of small segments. Do you, do you see these uh, do you see these lines? Do you or you do not? 
You don't? So yeah, so there are a bit, uh, there are a few lines over here. So discretize this arc, measure distances from the hinge up to different points on the arc, draw projectors from here, measure these distances like green lines, cram them over there. Okay, here, 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 right? So once you get those distances, then it becomes a little easier for you to draw the arc. Okay? Likewise, on the top, draw the horizontal lines. Okay? Is this going to be visible or is this going to be hidden? Visible. How about this? Is this going to be visible or is this going to be hidden? And would the arc corresponding to this plane here be shifted to the left, right? Shifted to the right. So once you have gotten this arc over here, if you're smart, you can just directly shift that arc to the right by the requisite amount. Or you can take the projections from here, OK, and get that arc at its proper location. So the top view becomes a little difficult to work with. Okay. Likewise on the left, same thing, exactly the same thing. So you have this edge drawn. Okay. So the edge corresponding to this corner will be visible. How about this corner? Visible, invisible, hidden. And then start taking projections, start measuring distances, transfer distances, and get your top view in order. This is for the arc. Likewise, on the top, that part is going to be visible. OK. How about this arc? Exactly the same procedure. Discretize this arc into a bunch of points, measure distances from this arc from the hinge line, and transfer those distances onto your top view. Likewise, on the top, join these guys. This is for the top face. This is for the top face. How about the bottom face? Yeah? Why is this local and why is this local? Oh, true, true, true. Then I'll have to be a little careful because then I'll have to figure out the, app, uh, the appropriate or proper location of this hinge line and this hinge line. So what I'm saying is if I locate this hinge line independently, if the location of this line is again independent from this, OK? Then the choice of this would depend on how I have located this hinge line. And the choice of this hinge line would depend on how I have located this hinge line. You can. Can you directly measure distances? So if you don't want to measure the distances from this hinge line, and rather, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to that. So let, let me see if I've gotten you right. So if you don't want to measure distances from this hinge line, rather if you want to measure distances of these points from this edge, okay, you can use this edge as reference and transfer the transfer distances accordingly. Is, is this what you're pointing at? Is this what you're aiming at? Or? Yeah. But instead of showing this as a hinge line, we show uh, 
You can, which is what I'm saying. You can, but you'll have to be a little careful. So if you want to show a common hinge line that separates this view from this view, you can. But when you do that, the location of this hinge line and this hinge line, they will be related. This is what I am referring to. So uh, after the mid break, you can, you're, you're going to be working on this example. So try it out. Try it out. So if you choose to represent both these hinge lines by a single hinge line, then make sure that these distances, they are properly correlated. At this time, they are, they, they, they are independent. You see what I mean? Or maybe, maybe we'll discuss this. Yeah. All right, so how about the features on the bottom face? This face here. Identical procedure. OK? So of course, like you, like you see this arc over here, you would also see something very similar at the bottom face. But if you look at the top view, this arc will get shifted inward. OK? And since this is at the bottom, this would be shown using hidden lines. Likewise, the inner slot over here, this will get shifted inward, corresponding to the bottom face, okay, and it will be shown using hidden lines. Okay, uh, did I miss out on anything else? Is is everything there? Sure. All right, so <laughs> why? Because I'm leaving you ten minutes earlier. You're too bored with TA-101, is it? Yes, sir. Too bored with TA-101. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Why are you bored? Huh? Time consuming. Well, <clears throat> If I have made you work a lot, if I have made you work a lot, I'm not sorry about that. <laughs> no, but it's not their fault, it's my fault. I'm making you work harder, no? Come on, you're learning so many things, isn't it? I'll give an example. So think about this. What? Come on. You are fresh from your JE exam. You know SL Noli, uh, SL Noli by heart. You know, uh, you know all, all your physics books. Uh, Resnick Halliday, is it? Or Resnick Halliday, Irudov? Or, or is there any new book that I'm not aware of? S.C. Verma, S.C. Verma, okay, oh yeah, <laughs> fine, so, <clears throat> given three points on a hyperbola, given three points on a hyperbola, Let's say this is your axis and uh, your hyperbola is symmetric about this. How do you construct it? Hyperbola. Pardon my drawing. I mean, I sh it sh should, have been, should have been more like that. Given three points on a hyperbola, how do you construct it? I 
I'm not interested in the algebraic solution. I'm interested in the geometric solution. How do you construct that? Huh? See? Think and analyze. If you have done your TA 101 well, maybe I can expect a, solu uh, a solution from you guys in another 5 or 10 minutes. But if you have not, They are symmetrical, but I need only one of these points, not, not two. How do you construct this geometrically, given three points on a hyperbola? Ish. What does it mean? What does it mean? Ish. Ish. Then it should have been I SH. That's ish. Huh? Ish. And what is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. You have a hyperbola problem to solve. So I have smart people in front of me, people from computer science, electrical, mechanical, mathematics, BSB, all of you guys have done SL Loney pretty nicely, I mean pretty thoroughly. Three points on a hyperbola, how do you construct it geometrically? Yeah? Huh? French curves? Come here. <laughs> come here, come here. Come here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four more guys to lift him. Four more guys to lift him. French cubs. Why not use a compass and draw an arc, man? Huh? They'll be more accurate? Yeah, all right. I'm not saying that. Anybody with a solution? Yeah? Step out, step out. So you got triangle? Triangle? Uh, triangle. You have a piece of chalk. Take a piece of chalk and explain it. This point will lie on the center of the triangle lies on the hyperbola. This point will lie on a hyperbola. Well, these three points are lying on a hyperbola itself. Given yeah, yeah. So these three points are already there on the hyperbola. How would how would this point lie on a hyperbola? Yeah, fine. So construct it. Construct it. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. So the points where they intersect, the corresponding concentric circles, those will give the points to the corresponding hyperbola. Sure. 
most probably. So, can you verify that and uh, yeah, I'll take some time. Okay. Okay. What? There is. There is. There is. There is a very obvious solution. Yeah. Now, I guess I should be saying a tier 101 is so difficult. I have absolutely no idea about these methods. All right, so, um, so when you return, and please do return after your mid-term break, <laughs> um, we'll talk about these interesting aspects of TA 101 in section and development. So it's pretty fun, a lot of, lot of uh, work, but pretty fun also. So um, happy Holi, go home.